the fun thing is still out there. Well, here's a good, this is going to be an interesting essay. And so the grabber is this introductory material that's in the introductory paragraph. So, you know, people remark, it's in school, it's funny, hard work, okay. But then what the student goes on is to refute that and say, well, no, I want to challenge this. So that's the grabber. The idea of challenging something that's very traditional in academia got my attention. I thought, well, here's a very, very brave student. And then look at the language he uses. My long and checkered past in <coughs> educational institutions has taught me that to fail grandly, to fail down extravagantly, to fail extravagantly, to go down a truly blazing splendor requires effort and imagination. <coughs> so then, from that also, I knew the tone of the essay, what the tone of the essay was going to be. This is going to be a well-written essay, I'm suspecting, but I also knew <coughs> it was going to be a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Okay, it's going to be somewhat facetious in this essay. So I thought, oh, well, that's really interesting. It's something what you usually get. And so that's the grabber. It's basically, the grabber is about the students challenging the traditional uh, view of failure in school. And then we get this thesis statement, the thesis statement with the actual pattern in it. And the actual pattern tells us what's going to go on. So to fail your year in grand style, what do you do? A, you antagonize your teachers. B, you disdain your studies. And C, you cheat on your work. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be an entertaining essay. So I know that the student is going to, is going to keep me interested and entertained in this essay. So there you have the grabber, and you have the thesis statement. The thesis statement provides a blueprint. So it's like a blueprint, so I know exactly what's coming next. So when I go to the first body paragraph, I know exactly what the first body paragraph is going to be about. So just like this example one up here, this geographical location, I know that the first body paragraph here is going to talk about antagonizing your teachers. Why? Because that's what the student said you would do. And so when you develop your essay, you develop the body paragraphs, follow your thesis exactly. So if you've got a blueprint style thesis, and later in the term I'll show you other styles of thesis, but if you've got a blueprint style thesis, then make sure you develop it in the exact same order that you, that you have laid out in your introductory paragraph. So we've got the first body paragraph. So the first step, antagonizing your teachers, isn't difficult if you keep in mind what it is that teachers like. Colon, colon because it's a list. Intelligent, interested, even enthusiastic faces in front row center. And then look at that phrase. The body paragraph joins on the introduction with that phrase, the first step. Do you remember what we call that phrase? <coughs> That links it starts with a T. Transition? Yes, transition. This is a transitional phrase, the first step. So this is a link that's joining that body paragraph to the intro. Right? It's the link. This link provides this coherence. Okay, so it's linking. So we've got we've got the first body paragraph is telling us what the thesis is, and already just looking at or the introductory paragraph did. Now the first body paragraph, right away I'm saying all oh, the student knows how to use transitions to make this paper coherent. Let's see if the if is unity, if this actually will relate to the first paragraph, and let's see if the student has the supports. Because remember those things I keep telling you about, unity, coherence, support, and sentence skills, what I'm looking for in the style of the paper? So let's go and see. Oh, well, yes, the first supporting idea is antagonizing teachers. What are some of the things the students give as examples? What can you do to antagonize your teachers? Board. Yeah, show boredom. What else can you do? What does the student say? What are the other words he uses? So these are examples. Just stop showing up to class. Yeah, yeah. Just want to use it for mm -hmm. So you can see all these points. Show your board. Slouching in your desk. Wear your Walkman. You can tell this is from a while ago. <laughs> Um, talk during the class, snort or snicker at the teacher, all these things. So these are the REMs. Okay, so the student, this is obviously a humorous move, the student is using REMs, reasons, examples, to develop this idea of antagonizing your teachers. So the student just doesn't just say you should antagonize your teachers, you should irritate them, you should make them annoyed. That would be three general statements. Good writing goes from general to specifics, your topic sentence, antagonize your teachers, joined on by a transitional phrase, the first step, and then all the supports for that. And then, of course, the student comes down to the concluding, uh, the concluding sentence in the first body paragraph. Once you've earned the loathing of all of your instructors, you'll be well underway to a truly memorable failure. 
so reminding us that in this paragraph, he developed the idea of antagonizing your teachers. Second body paragraph, what's the transitional phrase? Is the second step. Who knew writing academic link was this simple? There's a transitional phrase, the second step. What does it do for me as your audience? It leads me into this, okay, second step, and of course I remember, because I've never seen a paper like this before, I, I knew what his, the second step is going to be. I remember from the thesis statement, disdain your studies. And I thought, oh, good word choice, disdain. So disdain your studies, and the word sounds like it's showing disrespect, right? So second step, disdain your studies. Um, he says, it's easy to master, but probably boring anyway. Now, I wouldn't recommend taking a, a chances like this student has, putting boring in capital letters and with the hyphens in it, but because the tone of this essay is, like I said, very facetious, very, you know, there's, there's irony here, there's all sorts of things going on that you took, took when you study literature in high school. This student is very cleverly using these things, and so he can take a chance because he's really confident in his writing. So, just dating your studies. Well, then he has a whole list of things that you can do to just dating your studies. What are some of them? Not buying your textbooks. <coughs> Not textbooks. What else can you do? Don't take notes. Yeah, don't take notes. Is that showing disrespect to you stay for your studies? And this third one? Tell them really good excuses for why you didn't. Yeah, all the good excuses. <coughs> Look at the great excuses I had for having titles on it. <laughs> Cats. I was watching Dancing with the Stars, you know. Um, so very good excuses. I should have proofread and, and caught those errors. Um, so here the students using these, and, and look at even within the paragraph, there's coherence. Because he says, so I'm going to give you now three main points to support my second, my second step. First, da 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 da. <coughs> second, da 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 da. Third, and then and also then he further develops this even more. So lots of creative excuses, and I'm thinking in my head, well. Yeah, I wonder what he means by that. I think I've heard them all. The student actually lists them. My friend's aunt died. My gerbil's in a coma. Um, my dog ate the lab report. I've got mono. So all these cliche excuses that we do hear over and over, <coughs> there they are. And then he draws to a conclusion. You can bet your teachers will be really amused by these old standbys. By now, you're well on your way to disaster. And we get to the third body paragraph. What's the transitional phrase? The third step. <coughs> Cheating. A little bit of a coup de grace to your academic career. Now, I always remember I say, don't use these little phrases, but because the student is doing this with humor, he's actually pulled in a phrase like, you know, a phrase in French. And he's obviously, like, I think personally he was responding right to me when he did that because I made that comment. You don't need to throw in these kind of phrases. So he did it, but he did it so well that I have to say, hmm, oh, nicely done, young man. So he threw this phrase in. And the third step is cheating. Well, what are the examples? How does he develop this? What rems or reasons and examples are used? Yeah, copying something from the library. What else? Yeah, looking over and getting your classmates' answers on his or her paper. Having answers written on your arms. Asking to be excused to go to the washroom. <coughs> and then, so all these examples. And then he says, be bold. Look at that. With an informal tone, and remember, he's still keeping in mind with the audience, says everything is, is <coughs> grammatically correct, but he's taking a chance here. Be bold. Uh, dig out your old woodburning kit and lay some cheat notes on the desk. Good heavens. Um, <coughs> and then the concluding one, if you want to ensure not just failure but actual expulsion, send in a ringer, a lookalike to write the exam for you. Exclamatory <coughs> sentence. So taking a real chance there with it. And then, of course, the student needs to rein this in and come to a conclusion because I said five paragraphs only, please. And so the student reminds me that he's provided these guidelines. So if you follow these guidelines, you'll be guaranteed to flunk your year. And then so to summarize this, you know, what happened, um, you know, what was going on, you was going to flunk this way or that way. And then look at this. And I talked about an argument in the paper, how you can have a call to action. And I used a lovely example from Ovid Mercury uh, in a speech from him, and he has this lovely call to action at the end. So the student's almost mocking this, in a way, by coming up with his own call to action in this style of essay. The challenge is yours. Become a legend. Pick up the, pick up the torch and fall with it. So
So he's actually taking something that I taught in the next class, the argumentative essay, the call to action, and putting it into this particular essay here. There's no choice. This is an A plus essay. So, because the, this essay was being graded on, following the style, and then also how you chose your content and how the content fits into the style, what was I looking for? The same things I look for in all essays, whether it's your research paper, your informal essay, your reflections, your time management assignment that you're all working on really hard, right? You know, filling in things afterwards, you're working on it day by day. I'm trusting you on this one. Um, but as I always do, I hope that McDowell this ain't my first rodeo, so <laughs> I'll know if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But what I'm looking for, whether it's those journal entries or those, those informal things or your research paper, when I'm looking at your style, I'm looking to see if you're conveying the content to me and that you're showing that it's unified. So everything relates back to the thesis. Yes, this student clearly laid out his thesis, gave us the three main points he would develop, and then each body paragraph said first, second, third. So this is, has unity. So check, check, there's the A plus of this boy in unity. Coherence is a very obvious one. And I often say, you know, this is a too obvious, first, second, third, but it works in this particular essay. And when you're writing in an exam situation, don't worry about thinking about tra fancy transitional phrases. Say first, second, third. Why? Because your audience in an exam situation is also reading very quickly. When we mark exams, we march, march much more quickly than we mark a paper that you turn in because we're not making comments on it, we're just giving it a grade. So in an exam situation, I'd say go with this first, second, third because the audience is reading quickly. And in a way, I think he went first, second, third with his because he knew that his audience was going to read this quickly because the audience is so keen and eager to get on to the next paragraph. But those things, these transitional words and phrases create coherence. So the A plus and coherence. Support, he didn't just say, oh, just in your studies and then rephrase that. No, he actually gave very precise examples of what he could do. So support, A plus, and sentence skills, there's nothing you can fault here. A plus essay. And I hope that you all look at that essay and you think, I could have written that. What did the student do? He followed the exact formula. The exact formula. So do realize when you're writing, you're following the formula. And I will say your important papers that you turned in, they were some excellent, excellent papers in there. And the class medium it was, was much better than usual. So I was very happy with that. Give you a second mm -hmm. Oh yes, the cat one because I love cats. Okay, let's take a look at this one together. Cats. Okay. Well, once again, knowing the audience, this is a great essay for the student to choose a topic for cats because I'm a cat lover. So right away, that gets my attention. And then look at the grabber. A dog is a man's best friend. Oh, yes, I know that's a common thing. Well, then right away, the student gets into cats. So he's got my attention. So he got my attention um, at dogs, because I thought, why would someone write an essay about dogs for me? I don't have dog. dogs. So then I realized, oh, this is about cats. And there it is. Despite what dog lovers may believe, cats make excellent house pets. So I would have preferred the student had gone on a dark blueprint, but they chose not to, um, which is okay because the essay is so short. So there's a thesis statement. Despite what dog lovers may believe, cats make excellent house pets. I want you to skim through this paper, and I want you to highlight, if you have your highlighter with here, just use your pen, I want you to highlight the three topic sentences in each of the three body paragraphs. So look for the topic sentences in the three body paragraphs. Topic sentence is really easy to identify. Transitions. Yeah, they all they all have transitions, and they're all the first sentence in the paragraph. 
Now, topic sentences don't have to be the first sentence in the paragraph, but in academic writing, over 80% of the time, the topic sentence will be the first sentence. Sometimes it takes two sentences to do it, but in academic writing, that's when you usually find the topic sentence. And yes, look at the transitions. So we've got, in the first place, people enjoy the companionship of cats. So there's the first point that the students going to develop. If we look at the second body paragraph, the same thing. A transitional phrase. In the second place, cats are civilized members of the household. So that's their next main point. And the third main point, they put lastly. So I know, okay, this is a last body paragraph coming up. One of the most attractive features of cats as house pets is their ease of care. You can see the outline, right, you know, from the session, pull this outline up. Let's go back to that first body paragraph. In the first place, people enjoy the companionship of cats. There are one, two, three main points the students develop in that paragraph. Now I'll see if you can identify the three main points under that topic sentence of the companionship of cats. paragraph, we say the, the student did the same thing. Uh, she followed a formula. So the topic sentence, uh, people enjoy the companionship of cats. Instead of just making more generalized statements about, you know, cat, you know, we all like our cats, cats are fun to, no, she's giving us more detail, she's developing it. Many cats are affectionate, point number one. Well, what does she mean by affectionate? Well, she told me to write more details. They will snuggle up and ask the pet to scratch under the chin. Who can resist a purring cat? The next main point in this paragraph, if they're not feeling affectionate, cats are generally quite playful. What does she mean by that? Exact examples here. They love to chase balls and feathers, etc., etc. And then the third main point in this one paragraph is, contrary to popular opinion, cats can be trained. And then goes on to explain that a little bit. So you can see she's followed a formula. So we have the transition to provide a paragraph, we have the top sentence in that paragraph, we have three main points in that paragraph, and each of those points has further details to support it. Okay, reasons, examples, names, numbers, and sentences are used. Next body paragraph, transition that you already identified in the second place, the topic sentence, cats are civilized members of the household. Hmm. Three main points. The first point follows the topic sentence right away. Unlike dogs, cats do not bark or make other loud noises more details about that. Next main point, to support that topic sentence. Cats also don't often have accidents. I appreciate this in the middle of winter when my neighbors are walking their dogs and <laughs> I'm just a go downstairs baby. Um, so it develops that. And then the third point in the second body paragraph, cats do have claws and owners must make provision for this um, because what's the student doing? She's anticipating a, an argument. We'll say, yeah, but have you seen you know, so-and-so's curtains or you know, scratches on her arms? So this person actually is anticipating an argument, which is not necessary, but they are, and they put this in. Third body paragraph, you've already identified the topic sentence <coughs> and the uh, technique of coherence, the transitional word. Lastly, one of the most attractive features of cats as host pets is their ease of care. What are the three main points here that talk about the ease of care? Yep, take care of their own grooming, and there's one before that. They don't have to be walked. They do not have to be walked. And the third one? They can be trained. Yeah, they can be left at uh, home alone for a few hours. In the case of my cats, it's sometimes 12 hours. Um, so there are the three main points. You'll see there are further details under each one of those points. Then we come to a very calm, straightforward, 
Inclusion, cats are low maintenance, civilized companions. Uh, people who have small living quarters or less time for pet care should appreciate these characteristics of cats. However, many people who have plenty of space and time still opt for the cat because they love the cat personality. In many ways, I'm complete statement, in many ways, cats are the ideal host pet. So you can see the students follow the exact formula. Um, it's not as engaging as the formula style, but this is still an A paper. A to A plus paper. Why? Because it's unified, it's coherent writing, it's well supported, really good sentence skills. There are no errors in there. So once again, I'm not sure this is an A plus, I can't remember now, but it was a very, very good paper. So there's a formula, know the formula for academic writing and follow it. And when you do your tenant review tonight, I'd like you to go over this and maybe choose one of the two essays and review the essay again to see how it follows the pattern. Because Thursday I'm going to show you argument with the five paragraph style. I'm also going to show you with the three, the, the three uh, block development, argument, counter argument, conclusion. So I want you to have this five paragraph style really, really set in your head for Thursday. Any questions on that? All right. So well, I'm just going to do some review and turn some things back. That's it. That's it for that.